All right, hey guys, welcome in. Welcome back to Turner's Warehouse Live. I'll give it a few seconds to like flush everyone in and all that stuff. I know a lot of people are from all over. I know Chad's out in Alaska right now tuning in. Um, today we're gonna go over how to sand and polish a ring on the lathe using some wet sanding uh, techniques. Um, you can see this is the ring that I already worked with Last week, um, if you missed that live, you can go ahead and go back on our channel. It, it's posted already on there. You can see how I made this ring. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and bring this guy down to a finished product today. Um, I don't know if you'll notice, but before it was a little a bit thicker. I took it down just now with um, a 240 grit sandpaper. Now you can do that, but I would really recommend being careful with it. If it's like really, really thick, go ahead and take it down, but you're not gonna wanna go too far because such a large, um, or such a small like number of sandpaper will really embed grooves into your ring and you won't want that, that won't polish out. So you'll wanna be gentle with it and then go back up to your um, 800 when you're done with that and then take it down the rest of the way to get all of those grooves out. Um, so that's what we're gonna start with today is uh, actually, I'm going to start with a 400 right here, just to get it down and past that um, nail polish line. Now, a good tr tip while you're you're turning or um, sanding these guys is you're going to want all of that nail polish. And if you didn't put nail polish, you're going to want all of the resin that's on either side of the lips to be completely gone. And that's how you know it'll be completely flush. There's no um, doming, nothing like that. So, and a quick tip before we get started, make sure that your hair is up out of the way. If you have long hair, put on some glasses. Now, nothing's being turned away that will like harm your face. So you don't need a face shield, but you know, water can splash in your eye and it's not the most pleasant. So we're gonna go ahead and get started here. Now you can see that I'm just gonna fold this guy. Show you that on the camera. I just felt folded it like a little um, rectangle, just so there's like a divot to hold the water and press it onto there. Now, you're gonna wanna put enough pressure so that it's hot, but not enough pressure that you're like burning yourself. Um, and you're gonna wanna like move it back into the water continuously. Make sure it stays wet um, and like move it around your sandpaper. And why you're doing this is so that there's not like, you're not burning a piece into your sandpaper and it's getting all of, um, the effort you're putting into, because if you wear, wear out that spot in the sandpaper, it's not doing anything after that. Um, so like going back and forth can be very helpful. And remember, it's okay to feel that warmth. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up a little bit. Now this is a pretty small ring, so it's hard to get a nice grip on it, but you're gonna wanna try your best. Just move it around your fingers. And if you guys have any questions at all, please let us know and we'll be happy to help. Um, we'd love to see if you guys wanna make rings, um, to send it over to us through our email or if you wanna tag us on any social post, we'd always love to see everyone's attempts at making rings. Oh, you see, I just dropped that one. Great job, me. Oh shoot, there it is. And that white, like wet material is kind of what you're looking for. There's a sweet spot between getting that like um, white, 
creamy material on the thing. That's what's like turning off. That's how you know it's like going down. Um, and then like burning, there'll be like, like a brownish spot on there. Oops, if I can hold this right. Um, when you burnt the sandpaper. So we had a question, what chuck am I using? I'm using a collet chuck. Um, we do have these guys available. Uh, this is just a collet chuck that um, has a whole bunch of prongs that holds your ring mandrel. Um, and I am using a ring mandrel. You could use other things for making rings, but this is like the safest and easiest way. Um, you could use like a drill chuck and chuck that up to your man with your mandrel, things like that. Um, but we find that this is the easiest. And as you're going, you're going to want to, you know, take a quick stop, hit stop, check your progress. You can still see there's like spots like here where the um, lip of it is covered in nail polish. So um, you're, you're going to want to keep going at that point. You're going to want all of that gone before you move on to the polishing stage. And this can take a couple minutes, the, the um, sanding part of it. So don't be scared to like, you know, really work with it. And not everyone's going to be um, the same speed as everyone else. And not every ring is going to require the same amount of time. This ring was definitely very built up. So it'll take a little bit more time than say a ring that was not as built up and was ready closer to a polishing stage. Built up with resin or built up with stone? Built up with resin. Now I did go over this last week, but I'll go over it here just to confirm. You're gonna wanna make sure when you're making these rings that all of your stone is below the lip of the channel. Um, because when you polish and um, sand this material, any material inside of there will become dull and not shiny. It, it'll like look like a, like a brown spot on your ring. It won't look very good. So we recommend keeping it underneath the resin so it can stay, you know, like shiny and clear. Um, what was that? Yeah. And so as far as speed goes, um, I'm going pretty fast right now, but when we get into the um, polishing of it, I will turn it down. You're gonna want somewhere between seven and 900. I'm just going a little faster than that right now just to uh, get some of this material off as quick as I can. But seven and 900 is definitely your sweet spot for uh, sanding and polishing rings. And you're just gonna wanna go back and forth with it. Put some pressure on. Now this is a stainless steel ring, so you don't have to worry about the metal itself. It's not gonna, um, like rub off, the plating won't rub off, it's not plated, it's solid stainless steel. This is why we don't have rings that are like gold plated in this material or in this like type of ring, like a channel ring, because that will polish right off in this uh, step. And I don't know about you guys, but it's been a hot one. It's been a hot summer out here in Arizona. Um, Everybody's so. talking about the heat in the chat. Are you guys talking about the heat in the chat? Yeah, it's a brutal. So if you can, like, do this, you know, in an air-conditioned spot, that would be the best. But, you know, um, this part doesn't take that long. So it's pretty easy to get out here and do it for us. Um, but making the ring is nice because you can just be inside. Yeah, what was the question? Can you do that process on a hammered ring pour or would that not work? 
Yeah, so a hammered ring core, you can do the same exact process. You'll want to um, just bring it down and then polish it. You'll want to be a little more careful with your uh, nail polish, but it'll have the same exact effect. It'll rub right off as soon as you start sanding it down. Mm -hmm. um, another good tip for hammers is if you have that like annoying little piece that's like underneath one of the uh, more like intricate hammered uh, lip, a uh, razor blade will get that right off. So you can try that. And remember, I am putting quite a bit of pressure on there. It's not burning me, but I do feel the warmth. And when I do start to feel the warmth, um, I move on to grabbing uh, more water just to keep everything wet and nothing's going to rub and burn. So I'm going to check the ring now. So it's looking pretty good. I still have a little bit. I'm going to go to a lower um, uh, grit. I'm going to go down to 800 now. Grabbing the grit now. And then we're going to work with our 800 really quick. And you can see me just go back and forth. And back and forth. Really what you're wanting is it to be completely flush with the uh, lips of the channel without having any of that resin or that nail polish um, still on the sides. And if you, if you think, oh, I'm good, and you go on and you uh, realize, oh, no, you know, it's still too high, you can always go back. If you started polishing, you can always go back and redo this sanding process. Um, it's no problem at all. As well, if you're getting to this point um, and you find that there's a hole, like uh, there was a bubble in your resin and then sanding it down made a little hole, um, you can go ahead and just pop some UV resin on top of that hole, fill it in, let that cure and go back to sanding. So like, there's no mistakes that are too far. You can always keep going with it. You can always bring it back. I'm actually gonna um, lower this down, the speed. Back to our, that, our golden spot of between uh, 700 and 900, whatever your lathe will do. Our lathe, the lowest it looks like is 1,000, but you know, that, that'll work for this as well. Just remember to keep it, keep it soaked so it goes on. Do you guys like making rings or have you ever tried making a ring? I find that it's, I think my favorite thing to turn and create. And you can always feel it. I feel pretty good. It's pretty smooth. So I'm going to check it really quick. We're going to go around. This part's all good. This part's pretty flush. There is some bits on the lip here, so I'm gonna keep turning it down, but it's almost good. So we're just gonna go for like another 30 seconds to a minute. Putting that pressure on it. You've done a couple rings, CJ? That's, that is awesome. We love to see any of your guys' rings and if you're as like um, first time or if you're like an experienced ring maker, either way, we'd love to see them. Um, and another uh, thing that I already mentioned earlier, but I wanna just go over in case anyone's new, when you're doing this kind of thing or turning at all whatsoever, make sure that your hair is up or um, if you have long sleeves, your long sleeves are out of the way or tight to your body. There's no like jewelry hanging. Um, 
because if that gets caught in this moving um, like bit here, it will rip right out of you and it won't be a pleasant time, trust me. So just a tip, keep your hair up, be safe around a lathe. Yeah. And also like just pay attention to people around you. If you're, you're, you know, if there's multiple people coming in and out of the shop, and they you know come to look at your ring we've had it to where someone was looking at a ring they weren't even turning they were just watching someone else do it and then their hair got caught because you know you're not preparing yourself to be on a lathe when you're not using the lathe but just be aware of other people around you and warn them hey don't put your hair anywhere near this because it will get caught in a second and rip right out of you So that felt pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure everything's good. Take another pass around it. All right, so this looks pretty flush. Everything looks good so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on. So as for polishing, um, this is what we use for polishing. This is Zona paper. We have that available. Um, this is like just, I believe, 30 micro grit all the way to 2200. It's like, it goes a, a long range and it goes really high up there. Um, so you'll just wanna like do like small squares of it. Keep them in color order cause that's the order you'll want to go in. And then you can go ahead and Get this wet as well. You're gonna always wanna wet sand for any of these rings. Um, and you'll go from like smallest grit, which is gonna be the green, to the uh, highest grit, which is gonna be the white. Um, and you'll wanna do it on the lighter side is the side where you um, press it in on. And this part is real easy. You're gonna wanna go 30 to 40 seconds each. Oh, some people are making rings while they're watching. It's always nice to like create while you're watching other people create. I do that a lot when I'm like drawing or if I'm making a ring, I'll put on a video where someone else will do that. I totally get that. And you wanna, wanna keep this wet as well. Just make sure it's staying wet. Now 30 to 40 seconds is like pretty good, but if you want to go longer, um, like be my guest, it'll come out probably even better um, that way. This one looks pretty good. And then you'll just go to the next color. Mike says he's made two rings since the last live stream and he used a fine paintbrush for the inlay and it mm -hmm. works so much better than the toothpicks he's been using. So Mike says that um, he used a fine uh, paintbrush for the inlay instead of a toothpick. Game changer, definitely game changer um, for those guys. I like to use those fine little um, paintbrushes and then like tweezers to place my stones and it's way easier than like uh, just like a rod or a stick that I find at least. Um, and again, just, you know, a couple seconds each one. And in this process, what you're doing is you're polishing. Um, so we're not taking really any material off. We are just smoothing the surface. Um, so just keep it, you know, wet, keep it going. And for, and the reason why you're gonna wanna wear protective gear or like maybe even an apron is that this stuff just splatters everywhere. Sorry if it got on the camera. I, I'm not sure I haven't looked at the camera, but that is definitely a possibility. Now I'm just gonna make sure this is all good. And then at this point, it's been about 30 to 45 seconds. And these are Mississippi seconds, so keep that in mind. 
And then I can go ahead and move on to my next color, which is gonna be a light blue here. And these are in color order in the bag, but it will tell you on the bag what color is what in case you accidentally mix match them. But just like a small square like this will be perfect. You don't have to like use a whole bag. These are the ones that we recommend using. <coughs> and it is pretty hot out here, but it's not too bad. And I haven't been out here for too long. So these guys are definitely a better summer um, project than some other turning projects. Because the sanding and polishing doesn't take too, too long compared to the making of the ring. And this guy shouldn't get too hot either. It, I mean, it'll get warm, but not nearly as hot as the um, sanding. So like keep that in mind as far as your pressure goes. You're going to want to put pressure on there, but um, it shouldn't burn you when you do. Because then it's too much pressure or you don't have enough of water. And every mistake that was on top of this will get buffed right on out. You can already tell just from looking at the way that it's um, hitting the light while it spins that it's shining up real nice compared to when it was very dull from the uh, sanding. By the time we get to the um, white, it should be like pretty, pretty shiny as you're spinning. I'm moving on to my pink now. And keep this one moving as well. Um, this one you'll want to have the same, like move it back and forth. Don't put it in one spot for too long just to get, you know, it actually polishing instead of just rubbing on, you know, uh, burnt out uh, paper. And you can kind of tell when a spot's been used and to go on to the next spot, but just keep it back and forth. This ring I did a, a, a orange and a green look because they're like complementary colors because they're on the opposite of the color wheel. Um, so hopefully this turns out very nice, I'm hoping. Um, and then, you know, we're about halfway through the polishing process, so why don't we just go ahead and stop and look at what we've got going on here. You can see, it now it'll be hazy because there's water all over it, but you can see that it's polishing up real nice. You can see those, um, that shine in there. And it's looking good so far. Yeah, and that, that's a green, um, I used green goldstone and uh, abalone shell, crushed abalone shell with a orange background, um, in case you were wondering. And this is a four millimeter ring. So if you were wondering like, you know, how small in comparison is four millimeter to eight millimeter, this is a pretty thin ring. This is the thinnest we have. Um, available. They're pretty thin rings, but uh, our eight millimeter is gonna be like twice the size of this guy. So you get a pretty wide range of types of rings you can make. You know, everyone has a different style. And again, this shouldn't take too long, but you know, Take as much time as you feel comfortable with. If you want to go longer than 30 to 45 minutes each, um, it'll probably look great, you know. Is that a four? What size is that one? Four millimeters is the size of this guy. I believe the size size is a, like a seven or seven and a half, something like that.
I made this ring, but I don't really remember what size I chose for it. Just chose a random one. Now, I think we're pretty good on the um, pink. We're gonna move on to our lightest blue. Now remember, it's gonna be on the lighter side, so keep it in mind, whatever way you have it down, you wanna flip it over when you're going and do the lighter side, because it'll get a little confusing when you get to the white one. Um, but just remember which ways they were all facing. And it doesn't really hurt. You can touch the ring. It's pretty smooth. It doesn't hurt. Um, and it's okay if your mantle wobbles a little bit. Um, that's completely fine. If you find that it's wobbling too far that one side isn't getting as polished as the other side or like there's a piece that's not getting polished, you can go ahead and take it out of the call it, uh, call it and just like move it and then push it back in and it'll be fine. Um, but it, there is a whole bunch of like prongs holding onto this with this collet chuck. Um, so it should be pretty stable, but a wobbly mandrel is nothing to be scared of. It's completely fine. You'll do just as good as work. And again, this is a, is a stainless steel ring and you can do like tungsten we have available. There's carbide you can do. Um, we have stainless steel in a whole bunch of different types. Like there's ones that the channel inlay is um, like triangles uh, going back and forth or one that looks like a mountain. That one's really cool. So like the sky's the limit with these kind of guys. And you can put really whatever you want into this ring. I know people like to put like small fishing hooks if you're into fishing or our past employee put like little like stickers that go to like a nail kit um so there's like little smiley faces in there which are is so adorable um some people put ashes to make a memorial ring um you can put like sand in it if you went to like the beach um and at, like an island or whatever and you want to commem commemorate that trip or something And we're pretty good on this blue already. Um, and you kind of can kind of feel when the whole paper's been used and you're done with that one. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the white. Now this is our last step. Um, so you'll just wanna go with this one where you did for the rest of them. Um, and you always have the option of putting on uh, ring bling afterwards or like plastics or something like that. That can really make your ring pop if you want. Um, I would just use a little tiny bit of that in a, like a paper towel and just lightly put it on. Don't put pressure on it because that paper towel can like scratch up your ring um, at this high of like a, a NPR. So just a, a light pressure for that and then it'll ripe right off. Um, and that can really make your ring pop. That is a great option for that. But you know, doing just the zona paper already is like a perfect ring. Um, you'll get great results that way too. So people are talking about micro mesh, but they like that as well. Yeah, some people like micro mesh. That is a, also a great way to go with rings. Um, I prefer zona paper because I just get a lot more little pieces and it helps me, but um, some people prefer micro mesh. It's really all up to preference when doing these kind of guys. But so is a lot of turning. I, I, as you'll notice, like in the turning world, a lot of it, it's just like, some people like it this way, some people like it that way. <laughs> a big debate is whether you like your tubes scuffed or not. I always hear this debate all the time. And it's up to preference, I think. <laughs> but some people swear by it. Yeah, yeah, Amy's gonna go grab us some ring bling to show off. Um, ring bling or like, like um, Plastex, which is like a car buffing polish, uh, is really great for like your plastic work. And all of this resin is gonna essentially be plastic. So all of your resin work will look great with, if you hit it with like some ring bling or some Plastex, any kind of, thing like that. 
And again, that pressure isn't like hot, but it's like warm, but like not too warm. And you're moving it all around. You, you want to feel it under your fingers, definitely, like that firm press, but not like enough to where it burns or even like heats up your fingers. Just keep it back and forth. It is a pretty easy, like almost mindless task. I like to do this when I'm like listening to something or if I'm deep in thought. You have always the best thoughts when you're doing something mindless like driving or turning or in the shower. And again, it's hot out here, but it's not too bad because this water is definitely getting me splashed a little bit. So it's almost like I'm at a water park. Almost just as fun as a water park, I say. <laughs> and this is already looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and check it. Oh, yeah. Now it looks hazy when that water's on it, but once you wipe it off, you can see how clear and polished this ring is. Looks pretty good. And then I'll show you what our ring bling looks like. It's just a white compound, um, like polishing compound. Looks fine. And you'll just go ahead and squeeze just a little bit onto a small bit of paper towel, just like this. Maybe if it was open. Did I take off the lid? Did I take it off? No, right? right. <laughs> Technical difficulties here? Maybe if I can get it. Here, you wanna try? All right, you can just dab it in there if you want. That's clearly not working. <laughs> I don't know. I would, Here, I'll just do this. I would dab it all up off the top. <laughs> just a little bit. Like that much is completely fine. There you go. And then you'll go turn it back on. Lightly just hit it with it. Nothing too rough because this paper towel, although it feels soft, can really get um, your ring to be like all messed up. So I'm just going to go ahead and wipe this off with some more of our polishing. So Rick was just saying that he uses the leftover Zona to put the polish on. Yeah, you can do it that way. That's a great idea to just pop it on with some leftover zona if you're uh, worried about um, scratching, which is always a good thing to be worried about. But yeah, you can see how clear and shiny that guy is. I'm trying to get it not to be wet, but it's hard when my fingers are also wet. Uh, says, is it better to use a paper towel over a polishing pad? Um, you can use a polishing pad as long as it's like high, like our white Zona paper. Um, you can just pop it with uh, that instead or paper towel or whatever you really want to use. Just be light with it because it is a gritty compound. Um, but you can feel like how smooth it is. You can see all of your uh, rocks in there or whatever you put in there. Um, but yeah, this is a basically done ring. Uh, if you have any other questions, um, well, it's like on there, yeah. <laughs> um, let me try to grab that off. You can see. That shine in there, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, 
Perfect. Um, yeah, great ring. You can give it to your loved ones. You can make it for yourself. Um, you can give them away. I don't know what you guys like to do with them. I know a lot of people like to give their products away. I like, like to people sell them. Um, these guys sell for a lot, so you know, price your price your worth. Um, if anyone has any more questions, we can go ahead and answer those. I'm gonna put this guy right over here. And again, before we leave, I just wanna go over um, wet sanding is the best for rings. Um, safety, always wear safety. Always got your hair up. Um, no long sleeves, no jangly jewelry. Um, but other than that, just try it out for your guys' self. We'd love to see any attempts or if you're an expert ring maker, we'd love to see some professional rings. Um, and yeah, thanks you guys so much for coming out. Next week, I believe Chad will be doing his own live for knives. knives. He's gonna maybe up the I think he'll finish up a knife that he was working on two weeks ago. Um, so come on for that one. It'll be at 3 p.m. Arizona time. We'll have a reminder sent to everyone's email. If you don't get emails from us, go ahead and sign up on our website. No problem. Um, and we will be here next week. Mm -hmm. Everything looking good? Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Is it still on?